Hello YouTube, Sam from youtube.com slash onlivegamer here for the new Boston. And in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about errors. Now you can see here that I have the project we had open in the last tutorial. So in Visual Basic and mostly all other programming languages, you've got three types of errors. You've got syntax errors, you've got your runtime errors, and you've got your logic errors. Now I'll take you through these three types of errors and then I'll show you how to use the error list down here with errors warnings and messages so up here we have a program and since we have typed out all the code correctly if we run it it's gonna open up and run perfectly fine it's gonna print out hello world this is an example of a program that has no errors in it now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create an error now this error is gonna be a syntax error so you can see that when I type when I remove this parentheses here, it gives us an error down here in the error list. It tells us ex expression expected. It tells us the file that it's in. So over here in our solution explorer, we've got our comments project, got my project which, which holds all the settings and stuff for it, and we've got our file module1.vb. Now in projects, you can have a whole bunch of files. You can have a bunch of modules and a bunch of classes or, or forms and other stuff. So this is very useful when you're making bigger programs because it'll let you know uh, which file it, it's in. It also lets you know which line it is. And that is why we, ch we showed the lines by coming up here and going to Tools, Options, Text Editor, General, or All Languages, and click Checked Line Numbers. Now we did that so that whenever we get errors, we can see the line number that's in here, come over to our file, and we can come down here to line number 5 where it is and column 26. Now column 26 just means that it is 16 spaces over from the left right here. And you can see that whenever you have a syntax error it's got a little uh, squiggly line under it just to let you know where it is. Now if we go ahead and try to run this it won't run and it'll say that there were build errors. And if we go ahead and fix this it should run perfectly fine. It says hello world right there and now let's go ahead and talk a little bit about runtime errors. Now I can't show you an example of a runtime error in a simple program like this, but I'll try to explain it to you as best I can. Now let's say you're making a um, like an FTP downloader, which is what we're going to make later on, uh, close to the end of the tutorials. Once we've covered everything, I'm going to teach you how to build specific programs. Um, I'm going to take you through the steps I use to build those. Uh, so let's say we're creating an FTP downloader and we want to open a file to um, upload to the FTP server. So we try to open a file and it works fine and then once we try to upload it to the server it's going to give us an error because let's say the user doesn't have access to that. Now because the user doesn't have write permissions when they try to upload it it's going to give them an error and the program is going to freeze up and it's going to stop working and you'll have to force close it. So basically what you would need to do to handle this is to go ahead and enclose all of that code in what's called a try catch statement. Now what this does is it tries a block of code and catches any errors that are thrown and then once it catches those it decides what to do with them. Now all the programs that we're going to be writing or at least most of them up until close to the end we're not going to need a try catch statement so we'll be learning that later on. Um, so that's pretty much what a runtime error is. Now I'll tell you what a logic error is. <clears throat> a logic error is something that mostly every programmer hates. What it means is that your program compiles fine, it runs fine, but then the results or the outcome that you get from using your program is not what you expected. So uh, let's do an example of a logic error. This will be a really simple logic error. So let's say I forget to do console.readline and when I run this it just flashes and closes really quick so that's just a, a basic logic error but an example of a major logic error would be let's say somebody makes a calculator and they build all these classes for it and then once they go in the calculator and try to use it their calculations are wrong and that makes it really hard because it doesn't tell you where the errors are because there technically there isn't an error it's just an error in what you did and the outcome is not what you expected. So now that, I've, now that I've covered the three types of errors, we're going to come down here and take a 
closer look at the error list. Now, you can see that we have zero errors and zero warnings. Now, what a warning is, is it's pretty much the compiler trying to protect you from errors possibly happening when you run your code. So let's say, you may not understand this, let's say you create a variable and the variable is null and you try to do something but then the variable is never assigned and you try to call that variable you're going to get a null and you're going to get an error from that so always always look at your warnings don't ignore them and um, under messages it just gives you possible things uh, that you may want to okay so now that you've taken a look at some of the errors and the error types you can get and you've looked at the error list and how to find those errors and fix them um, go ahead and um, just play around with that a little bit more maybe watch this again just to get that stuck into your head and uh, once you're done with that go ahead and move on to the next tutorial and don't forget to comment like and subscribe